you're going to use that opportunity to go and, and indoctrinate these kids with your street ghetto philosophy certain point if you raise your level of income to the status of a rock star then uh -huh, uh -huh, then, right. then you got to keep coming up with ways to maintain that status we i mean i'm not even i'm not even saying eat meat but at least put some cereal in the milk come on <laughs> you that's like taking 666 the mark of the beast and redefining it like biggie tried to do and saying no it means this or that no, 666 is 666, you can call it holy 666, but it's still the mark of the beast. Convenient, whether it's welcome or unwelcome, you as preachers of the word are to show people in what way their lives are wrong. We welcome you now to a true church perspective with Pastor G. Craig Lewis. Blessings to all. This is G. Craig Lewis here again with another True Church Perspective. And you can find us here every Sunday at 930 a.m. in the Dallas-Fort Worth area on KHVN. You can also stream live over the Internet and you can get us pretty much all over the world. And if you can't get us, you can always log in to true-church.org. And you can download our broadcast there. But I just thank God that you are here. I thank God that you've decided to log in and hear a true church perspective. And, you know, I've mentioned it before. We are not using the word true church as if what we're doing is the only true church. There are many truth preachers out here. I know a lot of them. I'm friends with a lot of them. And just all over the world, there are people that are standing for truth and righteousness and they're not bending forward or backwards they're standing for the truth of the word and i just believe that in this day and time we need truth we need more truth so i thank god for all those that are standing strong in your cities and your areas those that are standing strong for the gospel those that are preaching the gospel and believing that the coming of christ is imminent they're not drinking the Kool-Aid, so to speak, and falling for all the lies and following pop culture and following what is popular, but they're standing for the truth no matter what. And I thank and praise God for men and women like that, that are sold out in this last day. You know, a lot of people have sold in, they've bought into the lie and they're following it tooth and nail. And the world is putting pressure on the church right now. This past election put pressure on the church and our current president putting pressure on the church what what do i mean by pressure pressure to cause you to choose a side and that's what it's all about when the apostles preached the gospel in the bible do you know what they were doing they were making it so that people could no longer be neutral in other words once you've heard the truth there is no new there is no neutral ground you can't stand in the middle anymore once you heard the truth and your eyes open up and you see the truth of the word you cannot be neutral anyone that is neutral at that point is in sin you either choose christ and his way or you choose you sin and you die and you go to hell and that is just what the bible says and people get mad oh jesus wouldn't send anybody to hell jesus wouldn't do that jesus just don't have to do it people are doing it you know it's funny how we want dominion and rulership over the earth when it comes to money and we want to be millionaires and we want to affect the world and we want to you know live high on the hog and we want all these things we want to command these things and command our own lifestyle command our own death destiny and future and all of that we want to have control of all those things but then when it comes to dying and going to hell we want jesus to give us a pass and we don't understand that the road we choose is what we've chosen and we all have opportunity to come to christ now listen people of god there's nothing wrong with having compassion for your brother and feeling sorry for him but all this weeping and mourning over michael jackson and and farrah fawcett and all these people that chose the way of how Hollywood and chose the lifestyle that they chose and chose to be a world renowned person. I mean, I'm trying to figure out why you feeling sorry for them and you chose the answer. We all can choose the answer. That is why we are put here to hear the truth, to preach the truth and to follow the truth because the truth is the answer.
answer. But if a person does not want to follow the truth, they will not get the truth in the end or the truth in the end will actually come and be their enemy. And that is where we are right now in the body of Christ with the church of God, the true church of God. So even though this radio broadcast may say true church perspective, the true church of God is within us all. And we know that if we serve God, if we serve him, believe that Jesus is our Lord and we serve him as Lord, we know we will be rescued from a lot of these things that are going on. And people of God, please hear what I'm saying. And I know people have probably already turned the radio off, but I got news for you. It don't matter if you turn the radio off, people of God. I mean, I, it does not matter. The truth is still the truth. And if you really don't understand what standing on neutral ground is, then you're going to be in trouble because the world is not going to let you stand there anymore. Are you listening to me? The homosexual agenda, the lesbians, the, the LGBT, the lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender movement uh, that our president is backing, they're not going to let you stand there anymore. You're going to have to move to one side or the other. This is what the mark of the beast is all about. It's about being marked for the side you're standing on. That's what it's all about. And don't you understand that if you're standing on the wrong side, you are marked with the mark of the beast. I mean, I know folks are waiting on a microchip to be inserted under their skin or in their forehead. They're waiting on some kind of barcode to be stamped on their arm or their forehead or whatever you waiting on. I, I understand that conceptually, but the spiritual mark of the beast is the side you're standing on. If you're silent about sin, if you're silent about the homosexual agenda, if you're silent about a abortion, if you're standing on the side that is for the things that are against God, guess what? You have chosen the mark. You have received the mark. The mark is in your heart. You've chosen the things that are against God for your own personal gratification, for your own personal gain. You have sold God out because if you're not standing with him, he said, you're either for me or you are against me. In other words, you cannot stand in the middle. He said, you're either gathering with me or you're scattering abroad. There is no middle ground. So please, people, listen to me. Hear me. Please don't turn the radio off. Please listen. You have to choose a side and I'm not giving you time to do it. You've already done it. You've already, your desire to turn the radio off right now tells me I chose my side and the side I choose is the side of fables. I don't want to believe any truth. I don't want to hear the truth. The truth bothers me. It upsets me. It's an, it doesn't go with what I want. What I want is this and what I want is that. And what you're saying, brother G Craig is going against what I want. So I'm going to turn this radio off. I'm going to go find me a preacher that will say what I want him to say, because I have my thing that I want. I have have my desires. I have my ideas. This is what I want. And this is the path I'm going on. Don't you understand? That means you've chosen a side. That means that the mark of the beast is on you. It resides in your heart. You've chosen what you wanted and not what God wanted. We've been dealing with these seven churches and now we're at the church that desired to please God. The church that chose Christ's agenda, the church that chose God's light and decided to be a light in their community, to be the church that God was pleased with. This is the church of Philadelphia, the last church we're dealing with. And this is the last week. Next week, we're going to jump on some current events and we're going to just deal with all kinds of stuff. But we want to keep this thing going because we believe that it is time for truth. We believe that the hour has come. Judgment has come upon America. The great Babylon, Babylon that stood against God, this great city that was turned into ruins. This city is back with a vengeance. And it is symbolic of the world government, the government that goes against God, that stands in opposition of God. Don't you understand, y'all? Uh, we just had our president meeting with the Pope and they were meeting to form this one world alliance, this one world government to rescue us out of financial ruin. Don't you understand? This is the book of Revelation, the book of Daniel. This is those books coming to pass right before our eyes and nobody's paying attention. Let's read Revelations 3 and 7. 
7. And let's get into this because I'm excited, as you can tell, about this broadcast. You know, I just celebrated a 40th birthday. So, you know, I feel like now I'm 40. Now somebody might listen to me. I'm a little older. So now somebody may consider me to be wise or something. <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, Revelations 3 and 7 says, And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that openeth, and no man shutteth, and shutteth, and no man openeth. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast. No man take thy crown. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out. And I will write upon him the name of my God, the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God. And I will write upon him my new name. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. This is a very encouraging passage to the church at Philadelphia. I want to just deal deal with a couple of points in this, and then I'm gonna be out of your way. And please, y'all, you know, it's two things that well, it's really three things. When I'm preaching and I'm traveling all over the country and literally all over the world, different places. I mean, it's the same in other countries. It's the same all over the world. I mean, it's like three things I can mention, and folks just want to get up and leave and get their money and say. I ain't giving no offering. Three things you can mention. Michael Jackson, Tyler Perry, and Barack Obama. It's almost like black people are kin to these folks. And you're talking about their uncle or their aunt or something. And when you mention anything that those three people do wrong, it's like folks just go crazy. They don't want to hear the gospel of Jesus. I don't want to hear nothing about no Jesus. You didn't call this name. I don't want to hear nothing you got to say about Jesus. And you can't help me because you're messing with Medea. And you're messing with the president. And you're messing with Michael Jackson. And Folks, I'm telling you, y'all, a fan is a true follower. I said that in part three of the truth behind hip hop. I stand on that philosophy. I know that the spirit of the Lord revealed that to me when I made that statement. And I said a fan is a true follower follower folks will deny the gospel of jesus because they're a fan they will deny the truth of the word because they're a fan they will mess their families up their relationships up and even challenge the god in them being a fan of somebody but listen people of god you only supposed to be jesus christ fan and anybody that's not a fan of christ that's following christ then they're against christ and so you need to get a grip on your christianity but this is what the scripture is saying let's go to this because I'm going to weave this in. You know I know how to do that. And I'm going <laughs> to let you know what it's really saying when John the Revelator is talking about this. And he, he makes the statement about the synagogue of Satan. He's talking in Revelations 3 and 9. And he's saying, I will make them that are of the synagogue of Satan, which say they're Jews or not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. What he's saying is those that are on the fence, those that are not true, true Jews. And he's talking about the Jews of the new kingdom that he has built. He's talking about those that have accepted Christ, Gentile Jew, no matter what ethnicity you are from, if you've accepted Christ as your Messiah, you are the Jew. You are the new Jew. So he's talking about the new Jews, not the Jews that crucified Christ, not the Orthodox ones that crucified him, not the Kabbalah Jews that worship ancient Egyptian mysticism. None of that. He's talking about the Jews that have accepted him. And he's saying those that are of the synagogue of Satan, which are those that are not saved or the false Jews. He's saying, I'm going to make them to bow before you. In other words, I'm going to make it known who's mine and who's not. In other words, I'm going to make a difference between those that belong to me and those that do not, even though they're saying it, even though they're saying, Lord, Lord, I'm going to show them that, no, I don't know you depart from me. You don't belong to me. So he's saying, I'm going to make a difference. Now, this is what 
what trials do. This is what a trying time in America is doing right now. It is showing us the difference between the real and the fake. There is no gray area right now for the body of Christ. In other words, it's easy to see. And I want to encourage you people that are looking for churches and looking for places to worship. And out of the people I know, uh, several of them have just stopped going to churches and they're having churches in their home because they say, I can't find anywhere to go where foolishness is not being preached because these people have built these huge monumental buildings and they can't sustain them. They can't pay the rent unless they preach lies. They can't sustain the building unless they preach lies. They got to keep the people coming. And that's because most of them, God didn't even tell to build a building. They were trying to be something in this life and they want to make their mark. Well, that building costs you truth because now you can't preach the truth. You know, it's like Joel Osteen. Joel Osteen's message gets weaker and weaker every time you hear him preach. The more people come in there, the weaker his message is because there's a big old note on that building that he has to pay and he can't pay it if he's telling the truth. He can't pay it if he's preaching the Bible, preaching against sin and preaching against the sins of the people. He can't say that stuff in that building because he won't be able to make his quota at the end of the month. And that is the problem we're having, y'all. And so people have decided, I'm just going to stay home. But listen, don't stay home. Don't stay home. See, God left the church. The church is what God is working through. And I'm not talking about just a building, but I'm talking about a gathering of believers. Don't you understand the power of prayer in the gathering of believers? When we gather together, there is a power of prayer. And I know many of you, maybe God is preparing for you to start a church and preparing, you know, on Sunday mornings, you're getting with your family or whatever. You're getting strengthened and God is in a preparatory period with you. And I understand that. So by all means, do what God tells you to do. But I'm encouraging those that have been hurt by the church, those that have been let down by the church, that the difference is being made right now. It's going to be easier to find the gospel preacher that's standing on the word of God, because as this gray area is pushed away, everything is going to be black and white. And that is what the sin of America is doing and America acting as Babylon, along with Iraq, the true Babylon and all these other places. They're acting in unison or acting together against God or opposing the plan of God. So now we can see the difference. And now you can't hide the truth anymore. The difference is being made. And he's saying here, those that are saying that they are Jews and are not, I'm going to make a difference so people can see them. You know, Roman 11, 26 talks about Israel, the new Israel saying that all of Israel will be saved. Well, people misinterpret that and they think that anybody living or born in that region is automatically saved. No, that is not saying that. It is saying that all of Israel, those that accept Christ as the Messiah shall be saved because Jesus died for them. Jesus died to create the new Israel, to bring his people, the true Israelites together, those that will obey and do his work will. But now we see the great Babylonian nation that is opposing God or in opposition to God. The great Babylonian movement is now in effect. Even in America, you got the LGBT, which I mentioned earlier, that's the lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender movement, where the president of the United States, without anybody knowing, without a national announcement, but if you go to whitehouse.gov, you can find it. This, our new president has has given the gays, the lesbians, the bisexual and transgenders their own month. And he bragged about being the first president to give them the month of June to celebrate themselves and to say, hey, for your contribution to the American society and to American people, we're going to give you a month to celebrate coming out. He said, you can come out now. You can live above ground. You don't have to hide anymore. We will celebrate you as a nation. We're going to celebrate the the homosexual, the lesbian, the transgender, and the bisexual. Y'all, this is this is a written document signed by the president, and he is bragging about being the first president to give them a month to celebrate. Now, y'all remember how long it took for us to get a Black History Month. You remember how long it took for us to get Martin Luther King Day recognized as a holiday. But these are things where somebody worked hard for the freedoms and worked hard for our nation and worked hard for 
our people and stood in opposition in the face of opposition for what was right and now you have sexual deviants those that have deviated from a man and a woman relationship standing in direct opposition of God and standing in an immoral position and going to affect every generation from now on with this foolish behavior sexual escapade now our president has given them a month and christened them as a great people that need to be recognized come on people are you listening to g craig lewis do you hear what i'm preaching right now it's hard for me to believe that i'm on the radio saying something like this right now after all of the preachers and all of the pastors and all of the folks that are supposed to love god and his agenda have stood it with this president marched with him and voted him in and said he is the one and now homosexuality and lesbianism and not just that that's bad but bisexual and transgenders have their own month to celebrate the month of june so next june june 2010 just be ready be re i don't even know if god is going to allow us to see that month without the rapture coming before because it's going to be a disgrace in america when you walk outside when you go to the restaurant when you go to the amusement park when you go to the city park everywhere you go you're gonna see two men kissing and two women kissing they're gonna be holding hands and in love and then you're gonna have to explain to your kids what's going on and then when your kids open the textbooks in their schools when your kids are being taught by the lesbian principal they're gonna ha have their lovers up there and they're gonna be kissing on them and they're gonna be telling you hey these are the images of marriage this is the image of uh, of, of being happy with the same sex they're gonna show that stuff to your children in your family because our president have christened them christened their immoral behavior and given them a stamp of approval and license to exploit it and this is a dirty shame y'all i hope you are listening to me i hope you hear what g craig lewis is saying because the hour has come and jesus christ is about to come get his people out of here the wickedness and the sin of these people those people that worship all gods those people that worship false gods god is about to judge them in america right now and also in this scripture and I'm, I'm gonna bring this to a close because i'm running out of time but praise god i hope somebody is listening i know we're gonna lose listeners because black folks turn this kind of stuff off a lot of them do not all of them please don't think i'm insulting those of you that want to hear the truth but a lot of us don't want it the bible said they want to hear fables they want to hear lies so they turn off oh listen to what he's saying i don't want to hear that where's my t-shirt i'm gonna wear my shirt proudly and they don't even understand the dynamic of what is going on here we're at the very end and the bible says that the people will not recognize that it is the end that's why he's coming like a thief a thief you don't know when a thief is coming and right now the people of god are not prepared for the return of christ but their head is in the sand and they're ignoring the signs and they will not believe that jesus christ is coming back for his perfect church so this church at philadelphia let's go back to this he says in 3 and 10 because thou hast kept the word of my patience i also also will keep thee from the hour of temptation now this hour is referring back to the hour in revelations 18 and 10 where he speaks of babylon being destroyed when the world stands in opposition of god when the world stands against the truth of god and when the world gets like it is now with a homosexual agenda and the lesbian agenda and all of this sinful mess is coming to the forefront of our nation people are celebrating wickedness people are celebrating a pop singer that turns turned himself into an ambiguous figure where he's not a man or a woman just just literally stripped himself of his identity to be even identified as a man or woman and everybody's crying and weeping including the church everybody is just in mourning and then we have you know the laws being passed in favor of sin this is the hour of destruction that is coming up on America just like Babylon the Great when its wealth was brought down to ruins that's what's happening in America right now Why while we're celebrating this man our wealth is being brought down to ruin and God is stripping this nation of his anointing he's stripping this nation of his favor he's stripping this nation and this world of their money and when this happens they are being destroyed the Bible tells us in Revelations 18 saying alas the great city Babylon that mighty city in one hour is thy judgment 
come. So basically it's saying it only takes one hour to destroy all the wealth, all the power, everything in that one hour, it will be destroyed. If you skip down to 18 and 16, it says, alas, alas, that great city that was closed in fine linen, purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones for in one hour, so great riches is come to naught as this great city fell. In other words, God is saying in one hour, he took the wealth, he stripped the favor, he destroyed the city the city could no longer exist and that is what the world's government is coming together to do to form a great alliance a great and powerful city or a great and powerful government or world government that is going to try to overthrow God that is going to try to stand in opposition of God our president presidents all over the world they are uniting with an evil agenda of homosexuality an evil agenda of immorality an evil agenda and they're going to take their finances and they're going to believe that because they've come together and brought all their money together that they're going to be some great and powerful world government but God is saying in one hour I'll snap my finger in one hour I'll just blow on them and I'm going to destroy it in one hour and this is so important for you to understand 3 and 10 in Revelation because he's saying I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth so here's God God's promise to the perfect church, to the church that is right, to the people that are looking toward him for the answer, to the people that believe he is the answer, to the people that believe he is the way, the truth, and the life. He's saying in that hour when I judge America, when I judge the world, I'm going to keep you. It won't affect you. I will preserve you and protect you because you are my people and because you've kept the word of my patience he said i'm gonna keep you he said behold i come quickly hold fast which thou have and let no man take thy crown in other words let nobody take the appearance of me being on you that's what the crown represents you're walking around with my crown and you're showing the world who i am he's saying don't take down in that hour don't take down you stand when people come and ask you what do you think about the homosexual agenda say well i think it's from the pits of hell and if you're homosexual i can pray for you and god can deliver you you have an opportunity to choose an answer just like i did when they come to you and say well what about this or that or how you're gonna vote or what you're gonna say just say you know what i gotta do things god's way so whatever god says is what i'm gonna do in other words keep your crown on keep showing people that christ dwells in you keep showing people that the agenda of christ is the answer for this world listen to me people of god him that overcometh will i make a pillar in the temple of my god and he shall go out no more and i will write upon him the name of my god the name of the city which is jerusalem and i will write upon him my new name he that hath an ear let him hear what the spirit of the lord says unto the church let me pray father god in jesus name lord i believe that this message was from you god i feel your presence and your anointing right now over this message though there may be many that turned it off though there may be many god that don't want to even accept responsibility for some of the things they've done and decisions they've made father though they may be turned to fables i believe father god that there are some that heard this message and your conviction came upon them your power came and visited them Father, I believe that they heard the truth of this word and from this day forward, they have a desire to stand for you. In this evil day, they want to stand for you. Father God, they have a desire to be what you want them to be. Father, those are the ones we're preaching to. Father, we understand that there is no neutral ground anymore. We have to stand. It's black and white now. We have to stand. Father, it's not ambiguous. It's not a middle place. God, we have to stand. Right or wrong we have to stand and father I pray right now for those that are listening that are touched by this message that you will be the answer for them God answer them Lord God they're looking for churches answer them God they're looking for a place to fellowship answer them God father they're praying for their marriage and their children answer them God father I pray because I believe you're the answer and Lord I believe that you will give them the answer you will give them the keys to the kingdom and father you will preserve them in that hour when the the world is tried and we just thank you for your promise God we thank you in Jesus name we'll be back next week with another true church 
Perspective. You've been listening to A True Church Perspective with Pastor G. Craig Lewis. Visit us at truth-church.org or at exministries.com. If you desire to support this ministry with your donations, please send them to P.O. Box 24870, Fort Worth, Texas 76124 or donate online at truth-church.org.